For your viewing pleasure, this broadcast of the Municipal Council Meeting of Alpena is made possible by the funding provided by the City of Alpena. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Alpena City Council meeting of October 21st, 2019. Call the order, please. Hess? Here. Johnson? Here. Nielsen? Here. Nowak? Here. And Walbar? Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, this evening we've got a couple of modifications to the agenda, if you will. I'd like to pull um, A, bills to be allowed uh, off of the consent agenda and put it down under C, report of officers for some uh, revisions. And I guess we can maybe go as one motion, if Bill's okay with that, to also add a closed session for uh, to discuss city manager negotiations. Mm -hmm. That's fine, yep. Second. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Omar All right. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, modifications to the agenda? Um, approval of minutes, special sessions of October 3rd, 2019 and October 5th, 2019. Regular and closed sessions of October 7th, 2019. Any issues or changes? Problems? Mm -hmm. Okay. Citizens appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda items are allowed five minutes each to address your concerns. Uh, this is the only time during tonight's meeting that you're allowed to address council. If you'd like to do so, please come to the podium and state your name and address for our records. Hey, Adam. Adam Paul, about 1387 Hobbs Drive, Planning Development Director, and also Thunder Bay Transportation Authority uh, Board President. Um, with the council's permission, we would like to uh, hold a public meeting to discuss the proposed millage um, next Tuesday, so the October 29th uh, at 6.30 in the council chambers. Um, we, we want to talk about the various, uh, you know, the history of the millage and what, it, what it's utilized for and that kind of thing. I know the mayor has agreed to uh, attend as well. Um, we would like the public and press to be, that we encourage them to attend and um, discuss just the details of the millage and uh, hopefully answer any questions anybody may have. Okay, not an issue for me. Or mm -hmm. What date did you say that would be, Adam? What time? October 29th at 6.30 here in the Council Chambers. We'll do a press release probably tomorrow or Wednesday and get it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, the consent agenda is uh, just a which I guess is the new A. Yep. Budget amendment request to decrease the general fund revenues for real property taxes by $42,722. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Malgora? Aye. And Haas? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. No presentations. Next up is an announcement. Uh, Halloween trick-or-treat hours in the city of Alpena are 5.30 until 7.30 on Thursday, October 31st, 2019. I have an additional announcement. Oh, sure. um, the deadline for write-in candidates to file for City Council is this Friday, October 25th at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. you're saying. <laughs> All right, thank you, Anna. Uh, report of officers. First up is uh, a corrective action plan for the retiree health care plan. Back in February, the Michigan Department of Treasury notified the city that a review of our 2018 retirement system annual report triggered a preliminary review of underfunded status for the city's retiree health care plan. And to prevent an official determination of underfunded status, the city was required to submit a waiver application to the department by April 12th. Council did approve the waiver application on April 1st, and it was then submitted to Treasury. It took a while for them to review it, and 
finally respond, which they did in late August, and they denied it, uh, necessitating the need to then submit a corrective action plan uh, within 180 days. Uh, when uh, Anna and uh, I, and I can't remember who else was, oh, <coughs> on that call, uh, Adam, Adam was there? involved, I think, maybe, uh, we talked to Treasury, and they explained that the problem was is they wanted us to show that we were going to be in compliance, basically hit the 40% threshold of funding within two to three years, and we had it at, I think, five or six. So they said basically <coughs> to resubmit our plan again as a corrective action plan, and it should be approved because the body that reviews corrective action plans gives you 30 years to get in compliance. So it jumped from two to three to 30. And uh, we did modify the plan, and we will hit, we should hit that 40% in, uh, I think it was 2024, within five years. So uh, we prepared all the documents, the forms which you have, and uh, you will need to uh, basically make two motions. Uh, one, to uh, approve the uh, plan itself, that has been completed by Anna, uh, with my assistance. And then secondly, the resolution, uh, which is number 29, or 2019-17. It is a simply a modification of the one you did back in April, uh, kind of <coughs> updating it and that, and, and approving that. And then all the documents will then be forwarded to Treasury, and we hope this time they will approve it. Any questions? No. Any questions at all? For the plan, then. Uh, let's do the. I move we uh, approve the corrective action plan for the retiree health system. Second. Nielsa? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Walgora? Aye. Huss? Yes. And Johnson? Yes. Motion carried. And I move we approve resolution 2019 17. Second. Noak? Yes. Walgora? Aye. Huss? Yes. Johnson? Yes. And Nielsen? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Next is a finance director's quarterly financial report, July 1 through September 30, 2019. Okay. <coughs> so as you can see, it looks different than before. Um, Leela and I went to a budgeting seminar a couple weeks ago, and um, one of the things that they suggested to do is if you're doing these budget monitoring reports to put in the explanation of variance off the side. So I added that. Um, I took out some charts that I didn't think were effective anymore, and also I wanted it to be bigger to be able to see because I know we were struggling before. It was really small. Um, I also added the original budget column so that you can see what was adopted back in May, because I think that's really important. Um, also, fire and EMS is now combined into one department. So um, at September 30th, we are at 41% of budget received. Um, you can see just off to the side where the explanations are. For the general department, um, we are at 63%, which is due to summer tax collection, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, for City Hall, it's down a little bit, but that's because rental rehab grants have not been received. IT um, is at only at 2.9% received, and that's because admin services and internal fiber, fiber rent don't get generalized until December. Cemetery is low at 20%, and one of the lines in there um, that is kind of significant is miscellaneous charges, and we've only received 1.25% of budget for that. Uh, police looks pretty good at 23%. Fire is at 4.92%, and that's due to the large reversing journal entry that we do every year. This one was $376,000. Um, public works, 28%, and that's due to the large annual firework donation. Lights, we haven't received any revenue yet. Um, basically, their own only source of revenue is reimbursements. We haven't received any yet. 
Parks and Rec is at 20.9%, um, and the large line in there that we haven't received anything yet for is donations. <clears throat> On the expenditure side, um, City Hall looks really good at 25%. IT is at 19%, and that's because no capital project um, expenses yet or any expenses in maintenance and repair and supplies are also under budget. That's a good thing. Building authority is the annual principal payment, so that's at 87%. Cemetery is at 18%. Uh, equipment, rent, and repair is below budget. Capital outlay only expended 17%. So more projects coming up, I guess. Police, 21.9%, no capital expenditures yet, and insurance isn't expended until later in the fiscal year. So some of these are just timing of different things. Um, fire is a little bit low at 21%, no equipment rent or debt payments or capital outlay has been expended yet. Public works looks okay at 23%, lights 13.75% um, because no wages, equipment rent or capital expenditures yet. Parks and Rec is a little bit high at 29%. Um, that's because equipment rent is high at 54%. And we also made the annual payment to the APLEX. I believe that's 20000 And then other financing uses are transfers um, to other departments. And it's right on 25% because that's how we, we do it. We do 25% of the full amount. So it's in line with this report. Um, as you can see in the amended budget column, our overall uh, revenue under expenditures is it increased to 331,000. And that's because of um, the bathroom renovation project that didn't happen. It was budgeted last year, but it got moved to this year. So the expenditures went up. Mm -hmm. But you'll probably see in, in last fiscal year that the fund balance will probably end up more than what we had anticipated. So overall expenditures are under budget at 23.35%. And then if you look at the second page, the cash balances and investments. Um, I put notes next to the ones that I thought were kind of significant. The tree park improvement fund, the balance is decreasing because we're using it up. Um, the water is positive this year and that is due to the auditors adjusting entry to remove the late fees that we can still collect them from the township we just um, the auditors just thought it was best to write them off for now to help get that positive so that looks really good there um, the stores cash balance is negative 66,000 that's because we made a large payment for salt of 120,000 um, that gets replenished as as um, inventory gets charged out and they pay the stores fund. Um, building inspection is negative 37,000 because of a quarterly appropriation to the general fund. And this, I think next quarter we're going to look at this closer, make sure that we don't put it in the negative and we only transfer what we can and maybe just make it up later. Um, the construction department of public works balance is lower than at this point last year because we borrowed 80,000 for the ambulance remount back in April. And that's gonna be repaid over two years. So one payment will be this year. Um, the retiree health care fund is at 1.6 million and it's increased because we made a much larger payment this year in July. So that's in there. And then down at the bottom, um, the retirement is at 25.788 million, and last year at this point it was 23.1 million. And um, you can see that you can see that like the government bonds and the corporate bonds, common stock, all of that was classified differently with Bluestein, so that's why those are zeros. And now um, PNC classifies it as fixed income and equities. <laughs> Um, but I also want you to keep in mind that two of you I know are on the retirement board and you're probably thinking, well, this number looks lower than what, than what Kirk had told us. And that's because this number is book value. Mm -hmm. He's reporting in market value. Mm -hmm. So just wanted you to be aware of that. And 
It's kind of like um, this. This will go down, or the the deficit is going to increase once we do that budget amendment that you approved for the taxes. Um, that was due to the uh, tax tribunal and then um, July Board of Review adjustments. So I got to adjust the budget for that. Um, but we. Yeah, um, but just today we got word that our uh, personal property tax reimbursement from the state is twenty thousand more than what we had budgeted. I put in four hundred thousand. We're getting four twenty, so that'll help offset that a little bit. Very good. Any questions? No. <laughs> I think she likes doing that because I have absolutely no questions at all. So. Good. Thank you. I love the format. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to receive them five. Second. Balgora? Aye. Hess? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. And Noah? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the You have to vote on bills to be allowed? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. No, okay. Yep. I jumped, jumped the gun. <laughs> Uh, so next, I'm sorry, is uh, we're going to add uh, C bills to be allowed in the amount of we're about to know. 80,000 $80, additional. So five hundred one thousand five hundred nine thousand ninety one dollars and eighty two cents. And that is because there's an $80,000 payment to first do supply for the SCBA cylinders that mm -hmm. um, it got missed and it needs to be paid tomorrow. So we can get that out. Get that going. Okay. I move we approve the bills to be allowed in the amount of five hundred nine thousand ninety one dollars and eighty two cents. Second. Hess? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Alagora. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next unfinished business. Second reading of amendment to the city's retirement system ordinance. Consistent with council policy, this would not be read again unless Somebody wishes for me to read it, so simply need to vote, yay or nay. Okay. And as a reminder, it's just it's just adding a position for a policeman, right? Yeah. yeah. For the police, police, group. Yeah. police person. Okay. Um, I move we approve ordinance number nineteen dash four five zero. Second. Johnson. Second. Yes. Nielsen. Yes. Nowak. Yes. Walgora. Aye. And Hess? Yes. Motion carried. <clears throat> Next up is new business. A is the Harbor Drive bathroom demolition bid. October 1st, 2019, the city received and open bids for the demolition of the restrooms <clears throat> at 101 Harbor Drive across the street from the city's marina. Over the last few years, the bathrooms have reached a point of such disrepair that renovations, while meeting new codes and rules, could, not, could prove to be more expensive than building new. And further, there have been many discussions as well as possible grant opportunities to relocate and expand the bathrooms. So with the bathrooms are not usable at this point and should be removed without spending further money on renovations. Uh, bid documents were sent to 12 firms. Uh, the list is attached and uh, we had two bids received. And bedrock contracting was the low bid at $5,475. Um, they worked with us on several <coughs> demolition projects, you know, and we're, we're very satisfied with their performance. They do a lot of it, and that indicates why they're so much so much lower, I think. And, uh, and also MacArthur's, we've got MacArthur pretty busy doing other things mm -hmm. <laughs> inside the city, so mm -hmm. I think that was a reflection of the, of the prices received, so. Um, it's my recommendation as Assistant City Engineer that the project be awarded to Bedrock in the amount of five thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. No questions. No questions. Mm -hmm. um, I move the award the bid to remove the to demo the bathrooms to Bedrock Contracting in the amount of five thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. Second. Nielsen. Yes. Nowak? Yes. Walgora? Okay. Hess? Yes. And Johnson? Yes. Motion carried. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Next up is the status on Bayview Park Site <coughs> Improvement Grant. Adam? Very good. 
Um, along those same lines with the uh, demolition of the bathrooms, Greg had asked me to give you, uh, give council and the public an update of what we're looking at uh, to get uh, the new restrooms constructed. Um, so I'm going to kind of choose bits and pieces here, but I'll try to, if I have to go back, let me know. But basically there's two opportunities that um, are currently in existence for grants for this type of use. Um, the first one is a DNR trust fund grant, which we've utilized previously uh, for the constructions at re uh, restroom that were in Starlight Beach, as well as the Northeast State Trailhead um, on the north side of town. Um, that's usually a one-to-one -one match, um, so just a random number. So for a $200,000 project, the city would be getting 100000 in a grant, and we would have to fundraise the other 100000 And most of the time, these restrooms are more than that, just for the restroom. The other potential funding source is the MEDC Public Improvement Program. This is a relatively new um, resource they've u utilized for their uh, federal uh, community development block grant money. Um, so this is um, the same program we used, are, we're in the process of utilizing for the improvements around NOAA and the DDA is attempting to utilize for their downtown. Um, it, is a federal, it is a federal grant as it has a 10% match instead of uh, a one-to-one. -one. Um, so uh, for a million dollar project, uh, the match would be roughly $100,000. Uh, there are some caveats. It is a federal prevailing wage um, and the grant process itself is fairly tedious. Um, but we, we've uh, done these type of grants before for a private on the private side, and we're confident that we can move forward. We have <coughs> submitted a uh, draft, um, submitted the concept to the MVDC, and so far they're favorable. Um, so ultimately, as far as the timelines go, the DNR grant wouldn't we wouldn't be able to start <coughs> spring of 2021, and with the various uh, caveats of this program, we probably wouldn't be able to start until 2021 on on the MVDC funding source as well. Um, ultimately, uh, as far as that goes, the, there is, has been some fu uh, funding issues with the MEDC, and the new, uh, new, the new state budget appeared to cut about $20 million from their budget. That does affect the availability of some of the funds for various sources for their grant money, but because this is a federal, federal CDBG grant, um, it would appear that that money has not been diminished. And so we do expect um, this program to continue, hopefully at least for the next year. Uh, as they just reevaluated the program and came up with some new standards. So that's where we're at with the grants. It'd be more uh, for that particular project. Hopefully, that's an accurate timeline, and I'd be more happy to answer any questions you may have. When, when you said that we that we prepared a preliminary proposal for MEDC, is that so preliminary that it was just, hey, this is what we want to build some new restrooms and sidewalks and things, or we don't? Weren't, are we to a point where we have? locations and something actually drawn up or yes. is it just kind of in the early? No, we, we put a, pl a plan together of engineering and, uh, and estimates. Uh, basically, we're looking at over near the band shell. Did we see it? Did I see it before? Um, I don't Maybe know I if it's been presented or not. Oh, it was okay. basically, uh, this had been talked about as an area for uh, new restrooms for a number of years. Sure. Uh, that sidewalk that goes from the parking lot and leads over, it be in that general area. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it's more than a restroom. It includes uh, basically a building pavilion. And so that's why the cost is higher because we're looking at a multi-purpose uh, facility there uh, with men with uh, amenities of benches, picnic tables, things of this sort. But that's the general location. Uh, it's always been that if we removed the one that we're going to demolish, it made more sense to move it over into the park where all the activities are. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would then be very available for things like Art in the Bay and so forth as well, when, when that area is used for that function. So once it gets a little farther along, obviously the application will have to come to council um, for the match, the 10% match that we're hoping it will stay at that. Uh, and, and move forward. Yeah. And along those lines, um, the MEDC won't fund just one bathroom. They want to see uh, <coughs> public infrastructure improvements throughout the whole uh, grant area. So they, they're, in their mind, that's why the scope would have to be expanded to something larger. Um, so we have to, that would include uh, other improvements to Bayview, like parks, benches, new sidewalks, lighting, um, as well as up to, out, out under the break walls and lighting improvements there, yeah. as well as some ship viewing areas. Yeah. Replacing so, all the lights, which are kind of beginning to deteriorate because they were the old 
pedestrian lights, and so replacing those as well yeah. was included in that. And you mentioned the fish, the ship viewing areas. People have asked me, and maybe perhaps you guys too, about making some kind of a friend, fishing friendly place on the break wall for fishing as well. Because you got the rocks now. Yeah, I know that at one point we've talked about fishing platforms. That wasn't part of this particular um, application, but um, okay. I know that it's been mentioned uh, back and forth. It's yeah, initially we had included also replacing the benches out there and putting up two viewing telescopes so people to be able to view ships or things out on the water, one handicapped, one not. Uh, and Rotary has actually agreed to fund those. And initially that was going to be part of the match, but because of the delay, those are probably going to go in in the spring. Hopefully, as of right now, Rotary is still committed to that. We simply got to get a meeting together to finalize when, but it will probably be in the spring. So they'll be done ahead of time and won't therefore be able to count towards the match. Okay. But they're still interested in putting those improvements in. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for the update. Thank you. Um, oh, you're staying for yeah. the next one. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks for that. Next two. I'm just hanging out. Okay. Uh, next is the Besser, Besser Assisted Living Community Commercial Rehabilitation Abatement Resolution Amendment. <laughs> All right, last May City Council approved Resolution 2019-09, which granted a commercial rehabilitation abatement for the Besser Senior Assisted Living Community Project to allow for two-year abatement to assist in covering costs for the relocation of a storm sewer line at the site of the project. City staff forwarded the application and resolution to the Michigan uh, State Department of Treasury, who eventually indicated there was some language missing from the resolution. Uh, they, re they required the resolution specify whether the term of the abatement could be extended. Um, the attached resolution uh, amends 2019-09 to clarify that the term of the abatement is set for two years and cannot be extended. Um, staff would ask the city council approve the amendments for resolution 2019-09 amended so it can be resubmitted to the uh, state treasury offices. And then if you look, the uh, language that's primarily, primarily been changed to page three of the resolution, it adds and the term of the abatement cannot be extended beyond two years, ending December 31st, 2021. So just a little tweak they wanted to have. Yeah, this happened to us before with uh, the Dean Arbor, because it was less than 10 years. We submitted it, and they did the same thing. And I didn't even think about it when Adam showed me this back then that we needed to do that, because they always require it. Because apparently you are allowed if it's less, if they ask for an extension to give it up to the 10, you know, to, if it's less than 10 years. And if you're not, you need to state that. Okay. And I didn't get it from our previous time when it happened, and uh, otherwise it would have been on there. That's fine. I don't, um, I don't normally like saying what we're not going to do. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I get, I understand it's a less than 10 years thing, which I guess would be the reason, but we, we start having to say what we're not going to do in things. We could say a lot. We could not do a lot of things. <laughs> but then mm -hmm. one day we require. we require it, so we're going to do it unless someone <laughs> has an issue with that. No, sir. Um, I move we amend resolution 19-9. Oh, second. Noak. Yes. Walgora. Haas? Yes. Johnson? Yes. And Nielsen? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Stick around. Stick around. <laughs> for D, uh, rezone 409 South Rippey Boulevard and 794 Clinton Street to R2 Single Family Residence District. All right. As far as the background in this case, the, uh, the structure at the property uh, has had several uses over the years from a residence um, as originally constructed in 1954 to an adult foster care home in, in 1970 and utilized for a specialty home furnishing uh, sales after a rezone in 2008. During the process, the exterior has not been greatly changed to, uh, to resemble a more classic uh, commercial structure and still appears to be a single-family home. 
Um, the lot at 794 Clinton was rezoned from R2 to P1 uh, parking uh, district in 2008 to utilize the vacant lot for parking purposes um, for the business to be located at 409 South Ripley. Um, structure in question does appear to be residential in character. Um, surrounding uses include single family residential to the east, a church across Clinton to the north, to the north, a computer dive shop to the south, and a strip mall across from Ripley to the west. Uh, rezoning both of these properties to R2 would not appear to be, uh, significantly alter the character of the neighborhood. Um, the structure again appears to be a single family residence. Um, the future blind use map does show this property as office service district, but it is directly adjacent to a large single family uh, residential section to the east. So, and at their October 8, uh, 2019 meeting, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the rezone request in 9 to 0, and staff would recommend that council approve the attached ordinance. First reading. First reading Come today. Okay. No. Anybody have any questions and bring it back for what looks to be an approval on, on the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Looks like no issues. Oh. More questions. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I, I didn't get my picture taken today, so this is my fancy <laughs> time. <laughs> 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 This is uh, ordinance number 19-451. It's an ordinance to the City of Alpena, Michigan, providing that the code of ordinances of the City of Alpena be amended by modifying and revising ordinance number 392 of said code. Be it ordained by the Municipal Council of the City of Alpena, State of Michigan, as follows. The zoning ordinance of the City of Alpena being ordinance number 392, establishing zoning districts, schedule regulations, and zoning map is hereby amended and revised in the following manner. The zoning classification of the following described parcels are hereby changed from B1, Local Business District, and P1, Vehicular Parking District, to R2, One Family Residential. The legal description is Lots 3 and 4 of Block 2 of Hampton's Addition to the City, and Lot 5, Block 2 of Hampton's Addition to the City. These parcels include the properties uh, located at 409 South Ripley Boulevard and 794 Clinton Street, and the provisions of this ordinance shall take effect 10 days after being adopted by the Municipal Council and duly published. Thank you, sir. Adjourn to closed session. And I move to adjourn to closed session uh, to discuss uh, city manager negotiations. <coughs> Walgara? Aye. Pass. That's okay. Pass? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. And Noah? Yes. Motion carried.